Greetings from just off Orwell Lane. With six shows now under his belt, Bill Johnstone really begins to fill out his performance of The Shadow, in this, his seventh installment in the titular role of our favorite hero. As a criminal defense lawyer serves his clients to the fullest extent of his abilities, he also enlists them into a criminal syndicate. Commissioner Weston is on to his game and asks the Shadow for an alliance to aid him in taking down the shyster. Can a system sickened by the ills of organized crime be brought back to health? The Shadow knows. Be sure to stick around for the end of this episode, where for the first time in the series, and something that will become standard for the next 13 episodes, a preview is offered of the next Shadow story. For now, however, from November 6th, 1938, Shyster Payoff. <laughs> Local Blue Coal Dealer presents The Shadow. These half-hour dramatizations are designed to forcibly demonstrate to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The Shadow's adventure begins in just a moment. But first, do you know exactly what the blue coloring on blue coal means? Well, that's the trademark of the Glen Alden Coal Company, the world's largest hard coal producer. And it's placed on their products, Blue Coal, to guarantee that you're getting a superior quality anthracite. So insist on Blue Coal when you order anthracite for the coming winter. Your entire family will appreciate Blue Coal's greater heating comfort. You'll appreciate Blue Coal's greater heating economy. Call your dealer for your supply of Blue Coal tomorrow. Shadow, mysterious character who aids those in distress and helps the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the unseen voice belongs. The only one who knows the true identity of that master of other people's minds, the Shadow. Today's story, Shyster Payoff. Commissioner Weston, my paper wants to know what you're doing about this wave of holdups. I hear you're resigning, Commissioner. What about the mayor's statement, Weston? Yes, come on, let's have your story. Wait a minute, come on. Wait a minute, boys. I'll give you a statement. Okay, Commissioner, thanks. Sure, we're having a crime wave. But the police department is as good as you'll find in any city. We make arrests. The trouble is the district attorney's office can't get convictions. But it isn't the DA's fault that the work of his office is hampered by a political fixer and a shyster lawyer. Hey, can we quote you on that? How about naming the shyster, Commissioner Weston? Who's the political fixer? Yes, come on, come on, come on. Give us some more. Hold it, boys. Hold it. What is it, Sergeant? There's a call in your office, Commissioner Weston. Sorry, boys. That's all. See you later. Who is it? The mayor? No, it's him again. Who are you talking about? Who's him? The shadow. The shadow? <laughs> if I haven't got enough troubles. All right, I'll talk to him. I'll call you if I need you. Yes, sir. All right, Shadow, what is it this time? <laughs> Good afternoon, Commissioner Weston. Did you enjoy your conference with the gentlemen of the press? You know everything, don't you? You flatter me, Commissioner. All right, let's have it. Commissioner, do my ears deceive me, or did I really detect a note of shall we say, welcome in your voice. Listen, Shadow, I'll admit you have helped the police department at times, and I'm willing to accept tips or help from you just as I would from any other citizen. I take it you are a citizen and are interested in law enforcement? Yes, Commissioner Weston. I am a citizen, and I am interested in law enforcement. I wish there were more like that. But you didn't call me to exchange compliments. What do you want? I call, Commissioner, to make a deal. A deal? For yourself, Shadow? No. Merely a deal whereby you will be ready to round up a criminal syndicate 
headed by Tiger, the notorious shyster lawyer, Grogan, the political fixer, and Red Doyle, the gangster. You're crazy, Shadow. We know they're all crooks, but we can't prove it. Suppose I could produce proof. I wouldn't arrest a combination like that without an ironclad case. I wouldn't last 24 hours if the rap didn't stick. They'd have my job. You'll have your ironclad case, Commissioner Weston. Wait until you hear from me. <laughs> your Honor, may it please the court. I submit that the indictment against my client, Harry Dale, is improperly drawn, and I therefore ask that the state's case be dismissed. I, I object, Your Honor! The indictment against Harry Dale is properly drawn under Section 73 of the Penal Code! <laughs> Order! Order in the court! Just a moment, gentlemen. The jury will please retire where I hear your arguments on a point of law which is not within the province of their deliberation. Very well, Mr. Tigert, Mr. Prosecutor, step to the bar. I will hear your arguments as to the validity of this indictment. Lamont Cranston, would you mind telling me why we've been following this lawyer, Rex Tigert, from court to court, watching him plead case after case? Just to give my very lovely assistant, Margot Lane, a cook's tour of the more unpleasant side of the legal profession. How do you like Tigert, Margot? He reminds me of a snake. What's he doing now, Lamont? Tiger is pulling another legal technicality, and snatching another criminal from the hands of the law. How did he get away with it? The law, Margot, is flexible. But its flexibility can be used by shyster lawyers like Tiger to provide loopholes. Order! Silence in the court! Watch what happens now. Order! Silence in the court. Mr. Prosecutor, I regret I must agree with the arguments of counsel for the defense, Mr. Tiger. I protest, Your Honor! I protest! Due to the testimony given by the defense, and because of this technical error in the indictment, I must dismiss the case against Harry Dale and discharge the jury. Lamont, Tiger just went into that apartment building. How much longer are we going to follow him around in the car? I've got to follow Tiger. Watch every move he makes, Margot. I promised Commissioner Weston an airtight case. I'm getting proof of a vicious racket. A racket that forces innocent people into a life of crime. Where are you going, Lamont? I'm going to follow Tiger into that apartment as the shadow. I have an idea Tiger is about to collect his fee for defending a recent client. Stay here, Margot. Wait till I return. Why have you come to my apartment? My brother's not here. My brother's not here, I tell you. I've given you every cent I have, every cent I can raise for defending him. For saving your brother from the electric chair, Ruth Dale. But my brother was innocent. Yes, but the evidence was all against him. Your brother is alive, free, only because of my knowledge of the law and your perjured testimony. Why, you made me testify falsely. You told me it was the only way to save my brother. Yes. Yes, I did. Do you want him tried again on the evidence? I can arrange it. And I can have you arrested for perjury, sent to prison. Oh, no, no, please let me alone. Your brother needs money. You need money. I can show you both how to make a lot of it. Quite easily. We won't do anything criminal. My plans are quite simple. You look like a girl accustomed to buying expensive jewels. You have only to go into jewelry shops and ask to see certain gems. When they are shown to you, it won't be your fault if your brother and others have them in and take them away. And suppose we refuse? You will go to prison for perjury, and the electric chair will be waiting for your brother. driving along. I'm sorry, Marco. Wherever Tiger goes, we go. I detest Tiger. But I'm glad he was able to get Dr. Lambert parole. I never did believe Dr. Lambert was responsible for that woman's death. Yes, Marco. I'm glad Lambert is out, too. But I'm sorry for anyone Tiger helps. Lamont, do you think Tiger needs to force him into his crime syndicate, too? Yes, Marco. The way he's done to Ruth Dale and her brother and many of us. Oh, but those poor people he's forcing into crime must be helped. 
Why don't you tell Commissioner Weston? I'm not ready, Marco. It takes a lot of fine threads to make a web of evidence to catch a slippery eel like Taggart. Besides, there are others. I'm out to get political fixer Grogan and Red Doyle the gangster. They're part of Tiger's crime syndicate. Lamont, it's raining so hard I can't see. Where are we? Outside the home of Dr. John Lambert, late of Lingate Prison. And look, yes. there in the driveway, Tiger's car. What's the next move, Lamont? Margot, you drive down yes, the road. Yes, I know, Lamont, and wait. I'm sorry, Margot. I know it's cold and wet, but I won't be long. I have a notion, Margot, that we'll drive away from here with an ironclad case for Commissioner Weston. Well, go on, Lamont. I'll wait. Good luck, Shannon. Oh, why did you get me out, Tigers? What good am I to myself or to anybody? A doctor convicted of murder without a right to practice. Where can I go? The parole board said I can't leave the state. What can I do? The board says I'll be sent back to prison if I don't get a job. Why didn't you let me serve out my sentence? Why didn't you leave me alone? Easy, easy. Take it easy. Because I can use you, Dr. Lambert. I have connections, friends who need a doctor that can trust. Oh, who would trust me? You can be trusted. Because you have reason to hate and fear the law as much as these connections of mine. But I've got to have a legitimate job or I'll be sent back to prison. I'll arrange that. All right, what do I have to do? It's right in your line as a surgeon. You'll be ready, day or night, to treat gunshot wounds, remove bullets, perhaps graft skin and change faces which have unfortunately found their way into the rogues' gallery of the police. What's in it for me? Money. Money you'll need for that fresh start when your year's probation is over. You'd let me go when my probation's up a year from now? Sure. That's fair enough, isn't it? Just for one year. Twelve months. Then money and a chance to get away. Far away. All right, Taggart, I'll do it. When do I start? I'm afraid, Doctor, you'll have to wait until one of my connections gets hurt. Meanwhile, he has 200 as a retainer. Here's the probation board. You're working for me as an investigator, but keep away from my law office. Just stay here and wait till you hear from me. All right, all right, I understand. Maybe a week before you get a call. But when it comes, go where you are told. And keep your mouth shut. Or you'll go back to the big house for another stretch. That's all, Dr. Lambert. <laughs> a shyster lawyer. A shyster doctor. You're in good company, John Lambert. Good company. Oh, I've got to stop talking to myself. I'm not in solitary. I'm free. I'm not in prison anymore. <laughs> what was that? That voice. No, you're still in prison. You're not free, John Lambert. You'll never be free. They'll never let you go. A voice. It laughed. It spoke to me and answered me. Oh, uh, am I losing my mind? No, Lambert. You're quite sane. But unless you listen to me, you're entering another kind of bondage. But what is this voice? It can't happen. It can't. There is more than a voice in this room. I am quite real. Quite close to you. As close as Rex Tiger was a few moments ago. Hypnosis. Yes, hypnosis. I'm here in this room, but I've clouded your mind so that you cannot see me. But who are you? What do you want? John Lambert, haven't you ever heard a certain name whispered through the dark cells of Lingate Prison? A name associated with the unseen? A name criminals hate and fear? The Shadow. You are the Shadow? Yes, but you have no reason to fear me. I believe you're an innocent man, unjustly convicted. Uh, the newspaper said I was innocent, too. But I went to prison just the same for seven long years. Now, Tiger has offered me money, then freedom after a year. What can you offer, Shadow? A chance to be true to your profession, to yourself. I have no profession. They took that away from me, and they took my self-respect, too. I'm not Dr. John Lambert, the surgeon. I'm ex-con number 2847, convicted murderer, out on parole because of a shyster, dirty shyster lawyer. There is no more Dr. John Lambert. You're wrong. That was John Lambert speaking just now, crying out against this bargain you've made with Tiger, a swine who never kept a bargain in his life. Oh, yes. You're right, Shadow. I, I can't go through with it. And yet, if I don't, Tiger will send me back. You know, he can. He has influence. I, too, have influence and power, Dr. Lambert. Doctor. Dr. Lambert. <laughs> it's been seven years and anybody calls me doctor. 
without a sneer or a laugh. What would you give to regain your professional honor? To escape Taggart's bondage? Oh, don't, Shadow, please. The don't. law can make amends. It's the law. It needs your help. Why should I help the law? It destroyed me. You can help put an end to criminal slavery such as Taggart offers you and countless others. You can help wipe out a vicious racket that enslaves poor unfortunates more than the prison from which they were released. Prison? Bondage? Yes, that is. It's bondage. Not freedom, not hope. You'll never be free. You'll never have hope. Unless... Unless what, Shadow? Unless you help me put Tiget and his kind behind bars. All right, Shadow. I will. I, I, I'll do it. I'll do anything you say. Because I know I can trust you. Even the men you sent to Lingate, the men who hate and fear you, swear you never break your word. I'll keep my word, Dr. Lambert. Tell me what you want me to do. Do nothing until Tiget's associates call you. Then go where they tell you. But before you go... I want you to phone a certain number. What number, Shadow? It's written on the old prescription pad on your desk. On, on the old prescription pad? Yes, Dr. Lambert. On the prescription pad. See it there? Old. Seven years yellowed with age. But that number will bring the shadow to you wherever you go. And it will mark the beginning of the road back for you and many others, if you do not fail me, if you do not fail the shadow. In just a moment, we continue with the shadow's gripping adventure. But first, a warning to all homeowners. Despite the present warm spell, advance reports from meteorologists predict the severest winter in 11 years. So there's no time like right now to order your supply of anthracite. It's the fuel furnaces in this section were especially designed to burn. And it's the fuel which will give you more even, dependable, and healthful heat at less cost. But when you order your supply, don't be content with just any anthracite. Insist on blue coal and be sure of getting America's finest anthracite. Blue Coal is the only trademarked hard coal. It's a guaranteed product of the Glen Alden Coal Company, the world's largest anthracite producer. Each carload as it comes from their mines is carefully tested by inspectors. Only the coal which meets Glen Alden's highest standards of quality is accepted for shipment and trademarked a harmless blue for easy identification. You'll welcome Blue Coal's greater economy. It burns better, banks better, gives you longer firing periods. So call and order your supply of blue coal tomorrow. Your dealer's name is listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the words blue coal. And be sure to ask your dealer about the blue coal heat regulator. It's a thermostat which controls your furnace dampers automatically and saves you all the time and trouble of constant furnace attention. It costs only $18.95 plus a nominal installation charge. I hope so, Lamont. When did Dr. Lambert phone you? About an hour ago. Tiger ordered him to go to the old Empire Hotel. Where's that? Along the beach, about three blocks from here. They slow the car down, Margot. I thought every hotel out here was closed for the winter. They are. So it makes an ideal headquarters for Tiger's mob. Why don't you let Commissioner Weston round them up, Lamont? You've done enough. No, Margot. I promised Weston an airtight case. I've got to be sure the whole outfit is caught for the goods before I give Weston the word to close in. What makes you so sure this will be the finish? It's the logical time for the gang to be paid off, Margot. Those three big jewel robberies this week, all unquestionably Tiger's gang. A girl going into the stores and asking to see certain valuable well, gems. That was Ruth Dale, all right. The description fitted perfectly. But why did they call for Dr. Lambert? The driver of the getaway car was shot, Margot. Are they two to one? Lambert is treating him right now. Be careful, he doesn't have to take a bullet out of the shadow. Oh. Uh, stop right here, Margot. Yeah, this is close enough. Now, Margot, wait and keep the short wave tuned in on the band the shadow always uses. Phone Weston the minute I give the word. Then go straight back to town and wait for me. Lamont, if I don't hear from you in an hour... You'll still stay away from the Empire Hotel, Margot Lane. That's an order. Lamont Cranston, there are times when I wish I'd never heard of the shadow. Well, go on, Lamont, and, and get this over with. Give me a drink. Give me 
I cut Doyle. Doyle, he's got to get me out of this. Shut Doyle. Tigers, get rolling, Doyle. I don't want to burn. I don't want to burn Doyle. There, there, there. Easy now, please. Please take it easy. Listen, Doc. Yes? Keep that guy quiet. Give him something to shut him up. That's what we're paying you for. The man is delirious, Doyle. Why didn't you call me sooner? Fix him up and don't ask so many questions. Where's Tigers? Where's Tigers? He's in the next room. What do you care? Now, you do as you're told and shut that guy up. Come on, Doyle. Let's get this slip ticket out. Okay, Tiger. Keep your shirt on. I'm coming. Doyle, don't let me. Throw me down. Well, then, I'm, I'm sorry, fellow, but I guess I'll have to put you under. So why doesn't the shadow come? They're all here. Why doesn't he come? <laughs> I am here, Dr. Lambert. I've been here for several minutes. Shadow, thank heavens you found the place. Oh. Well, Tiger, Logan. Give the man a hypo if he can stand it. Put him to sleep. I've already given it to him, but he should be in a hospital. He'll be on his way to a hospital in a few minutes. Are those the men you want out there, Shadow? Red Doyle is the actual leader of the gang, but Tiger gives the order. I don't know anything about Grogan. Grogan is the rottenest of the lot. He's a political fixer, without whom no big gang can operate. I know, but you, uh, you're not going to tackle them alone. No, but we're going to hold them in the next room until the police can close in. Commissioner Weston is waiting for word from me. Can you handle a gun? Yes, yes. Here, this wounded man has gone under. He won't give us any trouble. Good. Quick now. Take his gun over there on the table. Uh, all right, Shadow. It's loaded. Good. Now pocket that gun. Go in that other room. Get as close to Tiger as you can. When I speak, grab Tiger and shove that gun in his back. Don't let anyone get behind you. All right, Shadow. You haven't failed me so far, and I trust you now. <laughs> Calling Margot Lane. Calling Margot Lane. Born Weston at the 17th Precinct Station. He is there, ready and waiting. Tell him to surround and raid the Empire Hotel. Break into basement. Let no one escape. Let no one escape. That is all. All right, Tiger. The split is all figured out. Now, here's the payoff sheet. All right, Doyle. Pay off the punks first and get them out of here. Okay. Come here, Root Dale. Now, here's your cut. Fifty bucks. I don't want it. I won't take it. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars for turning criminal, helping rob three jewelry stores. You got fifty thousand dollars worth of gems. The newspaper said so. <laughs> ah, quit reading the papers. They always double a haul. Fifty dollars for helping you. The fence only paid us ten grand for the stuff. There was five of my regular boys who did the dirty work. A grand for Tiger, the Springers, if things went haywire. A grand to Grogan for a fix just in case and the getaway car. You better take it, Ruth. There's no other way. Take it or leave it. Only remember what I told you. The electric chair is still waiting for your brother here. Oh, please, I don't want the money. I don't care. Just let us go. Out of the way, Dame. All right, Dale. Here's your cut. A hundred bucks. Don't take it, Harry. Don't. Better take your share, Dale. Next time I may not be able to spring you. No, my sister's right. I didn't want to get mixed up in this. You made me, Tigers. I'm getting out with Ruth. Don't try it. Nobody quits. All right, now beat it, punks. Go on upstairs. Doyle and Grogan and I have got some things to talk over. Well, what about me, Tiger? Oh, I almost forgot you, Lambert. Didn't see you standing behind me. Give the doc 200, Doyle. How are the patients? As well as could be expected. Don't worry if you lose him. He's a dumbbell anyhow. Come on, Doyle. Let you, Tiger, and me get down to business. Okay, okay, Grogan. Come on, Tail. You and your sister and Lambert beat it. <laughs> Not so fast, gentlemen. Okay, what's that? What's that? <laughs> Just an unseen guest at the division of the spoils of crime. Tiger, there's only one guy that lives like that. A guy nobody's even seen. The shadow. Yes, Tiger. The shadow. Of course, he's come for a cut. Give it to him. He's poisoned. Yeah, he'll get a cut. Stand still, Tiger. Don't move. Lambert! What are you doing? Let, let go of me. Take that gun out of my back, you fool. Doyle! Broken. Help me. Hey, move. I'll shoot, Tiger. Well done, Dr. Lambert. Careful, Tiger. Lambert, you double-cropping... Shut up, Tiger. Doyle, throw your gun on the table. Throw it. Now you, Grogan. I don't carry a gun. Hurry, Dale. Search Grogan. Right. Miss Dale, you search Tiger. All right. Grogan hasn't got a gun, Shadow. Tiger hasn't either. Don't move. Those sirens mean Commissioner Weston and the police are coming to the feast of the unholy three. Shadow... I don't want to get mixed up with this gang. Tiger arranged my parole and forced me into it. Will you tell that to a grand jury, Dale? Yes. 
Yes, I'll testify. I'll testify against them. And my sister will, too, won't you, Ruth? Yes, I'll tell the police everything. I'll tell them, Shadow. If you turn state's evidence, you'll both go free. I have Commissioner Weston's promise. So you're working with Commissioner Weston, eh, Shadow? I've always worked for law and order. Keep away from those books on the table, Grogan. Uh, Dale, pick up those books. Hold on to them. Give them to Weston when he gets here. You can't pin anything on me, Shadow. Your name is in those books. You're on the payroll, Grogan. Those books will send you up for 20 years. The cops are coming down here, Tiger. Don't move, Tiger. Stay where you are, Doyle. Oh, there they are, by Stand where you are, all of you. Don't move. Commissioner Weston, here's the gang's book. Thanks, Dale. I know all about you. All right, Dr. Lambert. You can take that gun out of Tiger's back. I know all about you, too. You sweat for this, Weston. Well, if it isn't my old pain in the neck, Grogan, a political fixer. Yeah. He's part of the gang. He's on the payroll. You ain't got nothing on me. Hey, what about this gun here, Commissioner? He's all right, too. Don't put the cuffs on her. Red Doyle. Tiger. Grogan. What a night's nice work. You never pin anything on me, Weston. Save your shyster breath for the trial, Tiger. All right, take him away, boys. Right, Jack. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Take Harry Dale and his sister Ruth and Dr. Lambert to my office. Get their statements and have them wait for me. Yes, Commissioner. There's a wounded man in the other room, Commissioner. He's badly hurt. Uh, Sergeant, get him and rush him to the hospital. All right, boys, take uh, these trucks out of here. Get right get down 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 Shadow? Yes, Commissioner. Thanks. You certainly handed me an airtight case against three of the biggest crooks in the city. You'll keep your promise to help, Dr. Lambert. Dale and his sister? You kept your promise, I'll keep mine. That's all I ask. You're a strange man, Shadow. That's all you ever ask. I told you I was just a citizen interested in law enforcement, in seeing the innocent protected and the guilty punished. Goodbye, Commissioner. Until we meet again. <laughs> In just a moment, we have a surprise for you. A preview of next week's exciting shadow adventure. But first, here's John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert, with some more helpful information to all householders. Mr. Barclay. Thank you, Ken Roberts, and good evening, friends. Many people write in to tell me that they don't get the best heating results from the amount of coal they put on the fire. Well, that may be caused by losing heat up the chimney. Chimney loss is a common source of trouble and unnecessary waste of coal. However, it's an easy matter to remedy. The next time you fix the fire, move the handle of your turn damper, that disc inside the smoke pipe, one sixteenth of an inch toward the closed position. If the fire continues to burn freely, turn it another sixteenth of an inch. Repeat this operation until you've moved the turn damper as near as possible to the closed position. For the nearer the turn damper to the closed position, the smaller the chimney loft. When you found the ideal adjustment, mark the position with a piece of chalk on the smoke pipe and leave your dampers there throughout the burning season. If you find you have any other particular heating problem, I'd suggest you call your blue coal dealer. He'll place a trained John Barkley heating serviceman at your disposal. You'll find him fully qualified to check over your furnace and show you how to get better heat at less cost. I thank you. Now, a preview of next week's shadow story, Black Rock. Martin! And you too, Ward. Yeah. You're working for me now, and what I say goes. Okay, Burkett, we get it. What's the gag? A big business executive like you turned crook. Shut up, you two, and listen to me. Now, here's the setup. I'm going to steal, or shall I say acquire, the entire profits, two million dollars, of my company. Oh, boy, I get it, and then leave all the poor stockholders holding the bag. You'd take candy from a baby, wouldn't you? Don't worry. You two guys, you'll get your cut. Will innocent stockholders be robbed by an unscrupulous profiteer, or will the shadow be able to protect them? Find out next week when you hear the shadow's newest adventure, Black Rock.
This program has been a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow Magazine, now on sale at your local newsstand. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, will again present The Shadow. Be sure to listen and be sure to burn Blue Coal, the solid fuel for solid comfort. <laughs>